you're a solutions architect and you're fed up with being eight hours on the clock doing a migrations project after a migrations project and not having the time to do anything else at all so you've decided to become a sales engineer congratulations smart move do you want to know what that takes and what are the pros and cons of doing so if yes then i've made this video just for you and i will break it down by exploring the strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats for a solutions architect working in professional services organization making the leap to pre-sales to becoming a sales engineer and after that i'll give a step-by-step -step guide on how to actually make that transition happen so let's start with the strengths the first one on the list is technical skills you have the deep under understanding of the technology and how it can be used to solve business challenges and working in professional services you have the skills and the experience to design and implement technical solutions that meet customers requirements the next one is project management skills you know how to create and execute project plans how to manage resources and deliver technical solutions on time and within budget and finally problem solving skills you're good at troubleshooting and resolving technical issues that may and will arise during the solution implementation and also providing feedback and and product improvement suggestions back to the product engineering team now let's move on to the weaknesses you lack sales experience the ability to guide the customer on their buying journey through different stages and also working with internal stakeholders in sales organizations which have different priorities than those that you've seen in professional services the next one is sales skills you lack those especially those that are needed in the early stages of the deal like prospecting qualifying handling objections you've done a lot of that but you haven't done many any first meetings with a customer where it's still unclear whether it's a real prospect or not that's a key difference sales engineers are involved in the sales cycle from the very beginning not just in the technical part where the professional services get involved with a customer only at later stages and the next one is sales communication or I'd say probably also sales mindset which means that while you have those skills of building rapport with a customer pre sales is a little bit different because there's still not a lot of trust between the customer and the vendor so you will have to be dealing with very basic objections and handling those asking open-ended questions listening to the customer trying to figure out what their pain is what their goals are and how to align those with the benefits that our product brings so let's move on to the opportunities the first one is career growth you're expanding your career options by becoming an SC here's your chance finally to show to everyone how to sell the product more effectively and influence the sales outcomes and the revenue of your company also you will get more recognition and more visibility within your organization and it opens up new possibilities for career advancement and going into the leadership and the last one which I think is probably the most important one is the work-life balance as an SE you don't have that pressure of having to fill timesheets and project delivery deadlines I have much more time to work on side projects hobby projects collaboration with other advancing my skills and my knowledge which is pretty much not possible if you have to be built eight hours a day five days a week now let's move to the threats the biggest challenge is market competition if you're going to apply for SE job without prior SE experience you will be coming up against SEs that have experience of navigating the sales cycle however you're already very good at customer relationship work and you're very technical and you command that technology expertise that is needed for the SE job I think you are still have huge chances to be considered for the SE role the other one which I think is probably harder to overcome is what I call mindset change although we sales engineers are almost as technical as solutions architects there's still a little bit of a different mindset in the pre-sale phase the customers are more interested to know if their challenges can be addressed with our technology and not really how they can be addressed with our technology so as a sales engineer coming from solutions architecture you might have to deal with the frustration of having to pitch more vague and more high level technical solutions rather than more detailed and specific ones like you're used to do how to actually make the switch although you have pretty high chances of going out applying to different companies for the SE job and landing it I still think you have better chances of trying to make that leap within the current company actually I think that for any kind of job role change so here is what I would do in that case talk to your manager and announce your interest in becoming an SC if you don't tell anyone you will never be considered for the role ask them for guidance and support and see if they can provide some opportunities for you for mentoring and shadowing in the prospecting qualifying discovery and objection handling phase these are the essential skills that you still have to acquire 
Talk to your sales engineering peers, you probably know a lot of them already because you work together on the same customers, so just ask them for advice and feedback. Ask them for guidance, especially in the area of navigating the sales cycle, guiding the customer through the phases of a proof of concept, and working with internal sales stakeholders. Work on improving your sales skills. Invest time in understanding the sales aspect of the product. Work on pitching the product value based on the that deep technical knowledge that you have about the product. Try to understand why each technical feature of the product is important to the customer and how it advances the end user's business. Practice your sales skills by doing dry runs of the company's main sales deck. Although this is a job for the sales rep and you will almost never have to do this, it's still a very good practice to try to suppress your deep technical knowledge and just do the product value sales pitch. Another thing I like to do is decoupling completely from that product knowledge and just taking a everyday product like a soft drink or a smartphone and pitching the product value of that product and doing dry runs, recording myself, watching the video to identify you know, my strengths and my weaknesses and trying to improve on that. Update your LinkedIn profile and your CV to highlight those sales skills that you've acquired over time. I mean, you work with the customers, you've helped them realize the, the value of the technology, you've helped them advance their business, you've built a ton of demos, you have a technical knowledge, so build a portfolio that you can show of all your achievements, technical and sales-wise as well. This will definitely help you position yourself as a relevant candidate for any SE job. And obviously there's a ton of free resources, for instance, like my YouTube channel, Better Precious with Sasha, where I talk only about becoming an SE and how to navigate the sales cycle as an SE. If you like this video, hit that big like button and subscribe to the channel, hit that bell button and you'll be notified whenever a new cool content comes up on the channel. And finally, there is no one-size-fits-all formula on how to become an SC. I've given you a SWOT analysis for the solutions architect making the leap to sales engineering. And I've also given you a step-by-step -step guide on how I would go about it. But you will have to adapt according to your goals and your situation. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned and stay healthy.